Okay, in this lecture, we will begin discussing Newton's laws. Okay, so uh, there are three Newton's laws. Let's discuss the first law. Right. This is the, also called the law of inertia. So object at rest stays at rest. Okay. Object motion continues motion in straight in a straight line. until, for both these cases, acted upon by external force. All right, so let's go and discuss basically what that means. So first thing, what's the force? Okay, so this is an external influence Causes by accelerating. And that could be one of two things. It would cause something to um, speed up, slow down, or change direction. So, some examples of this gravity, electromagnetism. Right, and this force, because it can change something's um, uh, magnitude of this object's motion, the velocity, and its direction, the force is a vector quantity. Okay. All right, that's great. Okay. So basically, let's put some numbers to this. All right. So to do that, we have to know the second. And that's actually pretty simple. This is the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. So that's the mass of a body. It's the acceleration. And that's the net force. Oops. And that force is the vector sum of all the forces. Okay, so we can get the units of this thing, right? The accelerate the units of acceleration is just well, sorry. Uh, the units of acceleration is uh, the length divided by time squared, right? Meters per second squared. The unit for force. I don't know, quite know that yet. U for mass is just capital N, mass, right? And so you can multiply this all together. That means the unit for force is equal to the units of mass times the units of acceleration. Sorry. But that's basically mass, length over time, squared. That's kilogram meters per second squared. So this has a special name associated. This is called the Newton, right? Or N for short. Okay. Okay, great. All right. So let's do a simple example of this. Right? So suppose the particle at rest. subject to two forces, okay, let's draw this thing out, so this is uh, F1, F2, 
minus F2. Okay, I'll write down F1 is equal to, just I'm picking these numbers out, 3 i hat plus 4 j hat. So let's get this at x, y coordinate system. And let's make sure this is i hat. And that's j hat there. F2 is equal to, let's see, minus 4 i hat plus 2 j hat. Okay, random numbers here, right? So what's my net force? My net force is the sum of all the forces, that's F1 plus F2. So that's 3i hat plus 4j hat. These are newtons, of course. Plus minus 4i hat plus 2j hat. Newton from that. So this is going to equal to, let's see, 3 plus minus 4 is minus 1, i hat, 4 plus 2 is plus, plus 6, j hat, all right, okay, and this have covered acceleration now, that's going to be equal to the net force divided by m, which is now, um, let's see, look, I'll give, give it an m here, let's give this thing 2 kilograms, per se, so it's going to be minus 1 i hat plus 6 j hat divided by 2 minus 1 half i hat plus 3 j hat. Units acceleration, units per second squared. Okay, that's simple enough. All right. uh, this is, happens to be a constant acceleration. And so basically if we really wanted to, we could also go out and compute basically what the position of the particle changes its function time. But we're not going to worry about that right now. Okay, so that's basically the first part of it. Right. Now, um, when you uh, step on the scale, right, uh, what happens is that the scale measures something, right? The scale measures, it actually doesn't even measure your weight. Actually, what it measures is actually the normal force, the force that's exerted by the ground pushing up on you. Okay. All right, so if, one thing I want to say is the weight that you measure on the scale is not equal to the mass. All right, your mass. Okay. Okay. And so let's see why that is. So suppose you're sitting on this, on this scale right here. This, you will feel a force of gravity. of gravity. Okay. But you're not moving, right? Because the net force is zero. And so you must also have a counter force, which is the surface of the whatever thing you're or you're sitting on, which is basically pushing back up. That's the normal force. Right? And it's this normal force that's actually what the scale measures. So the normal force, Fn, is the uh, force, sorry, force perpendicular to a surface, right? And it's always there, basically, to stop it from uh, going through the surface, per se, right? Okay, and there are different examples of um, uh, normal forces, like, so for instance, basically, any surface will have a normal force. So for instance, if you sit on the surface like this, this is the force of gravity pulling you down. This is normal force, which is always 90 degrees relative to the surface, perpendicular surface, that's normal force. Right? Now, if there's no additional force here, this thing will slide down the block, right? And that's just basically how it works, right? Now, the normal force contact force because you have to be in contact with it for it to act, right? If you're not on the surface, say you're basically flowing through the air, for instance, you would just feel gravity. There's no normal force in this case, basically pushing you back up. Okay, now um, there's another kind of force. Suppose, for instance, um, you have a string that's attached to, let's say, a ceiling and a mast. All right, 
Now this weight is also basically feeling a force of gravity as well, but there's no surface thing on it. Instead, basically this thing, but yet this thing's not accelerating. So there's another force, which is basically the tension in the rope, right? So tension in the rope, okay? So tension, T is a force associated with strings or ropes, okay, etc. Right? And it has a property that always pulls. Right? Can't push a string after all. All right. Now, a lot of times, basically, uh, this is very simple, right? But we can also basically do much more complicated examples of this, right? And when we start doing complex examples with many, many forces, it's helpful to basically draw free body diagrams to help arrange all the forces. So let's talk about free body diagrams. And these are just pictures to sort out all the forces. And when things get hard, you actually do need free body diagrams to figure this out. Okay, so let's do the simplest free body diagram first. It's the first example. Let's put a mass M here on the surface, on the tabletop, say. Okay, and let's draw the free body diagram for this one. So what does the free body diagram look like? Well, in this case, basically, there are two forces acting on it. There's a force of gravity. And I also have to tell you that basically that, um, that there is... Um, uh, that this thing's not going through a table. So there's also a force going through this way, which is a normal force, right? Okay. And so if I tell you that the acceleration is equal to zero, that means that the, normal, the net force equals zero, which implies that the net force, which is equal to the force of gravity plus the normal force, that is equal to zero, right? And so if you don't know the normal force per se, you can figure out what it, is, what it has to be now, right? So let's give this a little axis here. Let's call this y-axis. Call this uh, j hat here, right? And so what we write down is that the net force is zero. That's going to be equal to the force of gravity is minus mg j hat, right? This is in the minus j hat direction or minus y direction, plus the normal force, which I do not know yet. So that implies, bring to this other side, the normal force is equal to mgj. So in fact, basically it points in the uh, direction normal of the surface in the positive y direction. Okay, so that's kind of nice. Right? Now, we can also do something else. We can also include basically additional force. Let's apply a force here uh, in this direction. Now we'll call this the x direction. And so let's associate i hat here as well. Now in this case, basically, the net force is not equal to zero because basically if you sum them up, it won't be. But if I tell you that it's not going through the y direction, f net comma y is still equal to zero, right? So we can use this property to derive this again. Let's just do that real quick. So in the y comma, there's only two y comma here. It's so basically minus mg plus fn. So that implies that fn is equal to mg. Okay, same as before. Now, on the other hand, f net comma x, we don't know what that is. So what is that? That's just going to be the sum of the forces. And it's only basically the sum of the forces in the x direction. There's only one force x, which is this f times i hat. So that means that f net comma x is just basically f. All right? Um, okay. And so if we'll put everything together, say... The net force vector is just F i hat, that's the problem, come on, plus, now what's the force in the y direction? That's zero, j hat, okay. Okay, so that's a simple example, right? Actually, two simple examples, right? Now let's consider a more complicated example. Let's imagine you're, you're pushing a broom. Now, in order to push the broom, you apply a force along a stick here toward a mass. This force basically goes down in this direction. 
And let's suppose there's an angle respect to the ground, which is theta. Okay, there's my ground. Okay, let's draw a free body diagram for this case. All right. Okay, so let's do that. Um, to draw a free body diagram. Basically, you just imagine this thing to reduce down the point. So you have basically the force of gravity, the normal force. Let's give this a xy plane as well. And then j hat i hat. And let's apply this final force here. That's this force this way. That's f. And of course, this is the angle of theta. Now this F will have basically two components. This F will have basically an Fx component and an Fy component. So it'll be Fx i hat plus Fy j hat. And in fact, j hat is actually negative because it's pointing in the minus direction. Now this one is just basically cosine theta. This one's sine theta. So it'll be F cosine theta i hat plus F sine theta j hat minus sign. Okay, very important there. Okay, so now let's sum up all the forces again. So the F net, well, this is not equal to zero, but if I tell you that this thing's not going through the floor, at least I know that in the Y component, that is equal to zero. So the sum of all the forces in the Y direction. So let's basically put that up. So let's see, there's a few of them. So first of all, it's um, it's uh, gravity, so that's minus mg. There's no force plus fn, okay? Let's keep the y going. And then the last one is minus f sine theta, okay? So I know this is equal to zero because the sum of net force of the y direction is zero. And if I do that, I can go ahead and compute what f, the normal force is. So fn is mg plus f sine theta, right? So this is bigger than just mg. So the normal force is not always mg, right? Because I'm also pushing down on this thing. There's a component of that pushing down on the thing, which is f sine theta, which adds the normal force, right? If I push it down hard enough, basically, I, and, this, and this table is weak enough, eventually I can push it right through the table. But it doesn't happen, all right? Okay, so that's the first thing, all right? Now the next thing is that I might want to um, figure out uh, what the x component is, right? So in that case, um, f net x, that's not equal to zero. So this is going to be equal to sum of all the forces of the x version. Now there's only just one, just this one right here. So it's just f cosine theta, right? Okay. All right. Now, yeah. Okay. So that's basically pushing a broom. Now the next example I will try, all right, is the following. Let's suppose I do the following. Let me just uh, pause. For okay, so I'm back. All right. So next one I'm consider is let's say I have a hanging picture. Uh, so how do I hang a picture? So basically, there's a mass here. And I have basically, let's say, for instance, a ceiling. And I'm going to drop two ropes on top of it. And got these ropes are in different directions. I'm going to have one rope look like that. And another rope look like that. Okay. And it's not drawn with the right angles. So I'm going to this, call this 40 degrees. Let's say that's 30 degrees, say, for instance, right? And this is tension one, tension two, okay? So now, what I have the following. This mass is not moving at all in either x or y, okay? So y, uh, x, y, j hat, i hat, say, right? So let's draw the free body diagram for it. So if we would you set down to a point. And basically we have one force here, which is the force of gravity. We have another force here, which is tension T1. And another force there, which is T2, okay? Now this angle is 30 degrees. That angle is 40 degrees. Not drawn exactly correctly, but okay. 
and this mass is the mass m, say, for instance. All right. Okay. Now, just give some solid numbers. Let's give this thing a number of 10 kilograms, and we'll basically like g equals 10 meters per second squared. Okay. You can use 9.8 as well, but like 10 is an easy number. I like easy numbers when I deal with stuff. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at this thing. All right. So I know the net force is zero because this picture better not be accelerating me somewhere. Right? And so basically I have to just do each component individually. I can actually in that principle. Uh, so what that means is that F net X equals zero, F net Y equals zero. Alright? So let's do each of these forces individually, right? So in the well, let's do the y, well, let's do the x direction first, right? So, uh, if I pick this thing, then the tension will pull it in these directions, all right? So, in fact, I have the tension, T1, will have a positive um, times cosine 40 degrees. So, it'll be T1 cosine of 40 degrees. T2 pulls the opposite, minus T2 cosine. Degrees, right? And that's it. This is the net force in the x direction, and this has to be zero. Okay. Likewise, I'm going to do this for the y direction. Yeah. Okay. So the y direction, they're both pulling up. So T1 sine of 40 degrees plus T2 sine of 40 degrees, right? Oh, uh, sorry, 30 degrees. That's minus m uh, the force of gravity. That's m g is equal to f net in the y direction. That's equal to zero as well. All right. Now I want to find basically t one t two. Okay. I want both of them in fact. So I want this t one and t two. And usually the trick is that you basically solve for you look for the one you don't want in order to get the one you don't need, right? But in this case, I need both of them. So it doesn't matter, right? I'm just going to pick one, right? So I'm going to basically pick solve for T2 in order to get T1, and then I'll get T2 right after that. So I'm going to solve for T2, right? Um, and so what we have is that um, let's see, so this one T1 cosine 40 minus T2 cosine 30 equals zero. So T2 is equal to, let's see, bring this side, T1 cosine 40 over cosine 30, okay? I can actually plug that number in. Now just to make my life a little simpler. Let's see, cosine of 40 divided by cosine of 30. Okay, that's uh, 0 0.88, let's call it, yeah, A8, T1. All right, simple enough. Okay, I'm going to keep that in mind now. Now I plug this into basically the second one. So let's write that down. Uh, T1 sine of 40 plus T2 sine of 30 minus mg equals 0 again. Right, because that's net force. Let's plug in numbers now. So this is T1. What's sine of 40? Let's just figure that out. Um, sine of 40. That is uh, 0 0.64 plus T2 is sine of 30. I know that is. It's 0 0.5. Minus, let's see, I said this is 10 kilograms. 10 kilograms. G is 10 again. Zero. All right. Okay, now plug in my term for T2. Right? Okay. And then the rest of it is pretty simple. So I have, let's see, so I got, so this is T1. 0 0.64 plus 0.88 times 0.5 is 0 0.44. Uh, now 
bring the 100 to the side equals 100. So let's just figure that out. It's uh, 0.44 plus 0.64. I'm going to divide this one times 100. Okay, so that implies that T1 is equal to 92.6 newtons, right? And T2, which is equal to, uh, which I had earlier, 0 0.88 times T1. That's going to be equal to times, multiply this thing through, 0.88. Perfect. That's 81.5. Okay. So that's basically the setup of the problem. Okay. So, um, Let's try this next one, all right? Uh, motion with two or more objects. Okay, all right. So, so this is the time that we need to introduce the third law. is basically when two or more bodies interact, the force of A on B, so this is the two bodies in A and B, is equal to opposite of B on A. Okay. So what that means is that the force exerted by A on B is equal to minus the force of B on A. Okay. Now they exert it on two different forces, right? So for instance, this is the force exerted on A, this is the force exerted on B. Here is an example of that. Suppose I have a track here, a frictionless surface, and I put these two bodies here. This is body A, this is body B, okay? And I'm gonna give these things a mass. This is basically 10 kilograms. This is five kilograms, all right? And I'm gonna apply a force to this thing. And I don't know what the force is, but I know one thing. I know the acceleration of the entire thing is equal to 2 meters per second squared. I know that. Okay. All right. So what we want to do is draw a free body diagram for both of these objects. Because there are two objects here, there must be two free body diagrams. So I look at basically force object A. Okay. I have a force going this way. That's my force. I also have the force that B exerts on A, right? Now, on object B, I just feel one force. That's the force that A exerts on B, all right? Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to figure out basically what the two, what all the forces are. Okay, so let's go figure this out. So I know for object A, that the net force must produce acceleration equal to two meters per second. So acceleration divided by mass is equal to two meters per second, all right? So all this is along the x direction, so it's gonna basically, um, we can just write this ax is equal to f net in the x direction over m. So this equals two, which is equal to what? So the sum of the forces here over M, which is equal to uh, F of B on A plus F divided by basically M, which is in this case going to be 10 kilograms. I'm 
will write this as m a, m sub a, so that we know this is the acceleration due to a. Okay. And this also equal to two. So that's basically the first equation. Now let's basically do part b. Okay. The acceleration on b. That's just the net force on b divided by the mass of b. That is basically all in the x direction, so that's basically a x again equals 2 is equal to the net force in the x direction divided by the mass of b. And again, this is the sum of the forces in the x direction for mass b. And in this case, there's only one force on it. It's basically f of a on b divided by f b. Okay? Now, we use Newton's third law, all right, which says that F of A on B is equal to minus F of B on A, okay? This actually has the vector sign in front of it, but I'm usually just components of it. So as long as I keep, as long as I keep this a general sense of what X direction is, then I can basically make this work, okay? So uh, I'm gonna just plug this one in. So basically I just convert one of these things to the right sign. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, so then I'm going to write like this. So um, for this one, two is equal to f of a on b divided by mass of b. Okay, so I'm going to use this Newton's third law now. It's minus f of b on a divided by. Let's see, we're like here. Let's see. So it's uh, the mass is five, and this is equal to two. So that means that f B on A is equal to 5 times 2 is 10 minus sign minus 10 newtons. Alright? Okay? Alright, so now I can take this thing, this result, and plug it in here. Alright? So let's go ahead and plug that one in. So again, the acceleration is 2 again. That's going to be F of B on A plus F divided by the mass of A is 10 kilograms. Right? I just figured out what that is, so basically 2 is equal to minus 10 plus F over 10. So that gives me basically 2, what, oh right, minus 1 plus F over 10, right? So you bring this side, x you 3 times 10 is 30, so F equals 30 newtons. Alright, so that's basically an example of Newton's third law. Now, for the final thing I want to discuss within this section, um, let me just pause for a second, make sure I cover everything. Okay, so um, let's do this one here. So I'm going to discuss something called the Atwood machine. So this is what the Atwood machine does. Um, it's basically a pulley. And from this pulley, you could suspend two masses here, right? Okay, this mass A, mass B, all right? And we're gonna make mass B head uh, more massive, 30 kilogram, 20 kilograms, right? So what's gonna happen, basically, this thing's gonna fall down this way, all right? Okay, so, um, this is the part where we have to draw a special x-axis here. So I'm going to draw a special axis. The axis looks like this, so it basically goes around like this way. That's plus x, okay? All right? Now, operation, what that means is that x is pointing up this way and pointing down this way, all right? And so we got to keep that in mind when we do this, all right? So let's draw the free body diagram for each of these masses. This is mass A. So what does it feel? It feels based on the force of gravity. And it also feels a tension, all right? We'll call this tension T here. All right, okay. Um, and in this case, this is gonna be the plus X direction. 
Now if I look at mass B, in this case, plus x is going this way. I'm going to feel a force of gravity again. And again, I'm going to feel a tension this here as well. Okay. All right. So let's do it for each one of these things. Divide this up so we have, we have space here. All right. So this is uh, what's going to happen is this thing's going to accelerate toward the ground. I want to figure out how much this is accelerating. All right. So this is going to have to be careful. All right. So let's figure this out. So this is the sum of the forces. It's the net force. That's going to be equal to the mass of A times acceleration. And again, this is going to be the sum of the forces. This is the net force here for, my, for mass B. That's also the mass of B times acceleration. Now, the acceleration of the two in magnitude have to be the same, actually, in direction two, because of this the funny way we define this, uh, this coordinate system. All right, so let's look at the forces here. So there are two forces here. So this tension is the positive direction. And then the force of gravity is minus or so minus m a g is equal to the mass of a times acceleration of a. This one, the tension is in the minus direction, minus t, plus now, this is m g, because it's basically gravity is pointing the same direction as positive x. That's equal to the mass of um, sorry, the mass b, mass b times acceleration. Now, if I ask, what is, what is the acceleration? I don't care what t is, per se. So I'll solve for t, and then basically that will give me a. But more generally, I'm going to ask for both, right? Both the mass and the acceleration. In which case, you can choose either or, but usually it's always better to solve for t. Okay? So we're going to use this. So let's basically use this. We'll solve for t. So we're going to use this one first. So T is equal to the mass of A times A plus the mass of A times G. So that's basically MA A plus G. Okay? Right? Um, actually, no, we'll leave like this. It's a little easier. Okay, so now I'll take this thing. I'll plug it into this thing right here. So minus T plus MBG. Next one is going to be equal to M B of A, right? So group the A's together and group the G's together. So what you end up is pretty simple again. So this on the on the on this side is going to be the mass of B minus the mass of A times G is equal to the mass of A plus the mass of B. So what you get is A is equal to mass of B minus mass G, mass of, sorry, A divided by mass of B plus the mass of A times G, okay? So we can then go ahead and plug in the numbers here. Let's see, B is 30 minus 20 over 30 plus 20 times G is 10, sorry. So that's basically one-fifth, right? So 10 over 50 is one-fifth, and so it's basically two meters per second squared. That's A, right? And so now we want to find the tension, right? Plug this, plug this in. So the mass of A was 20 times 2 plus mass of A is 20 times 10 meters per second squared. That's going to be 40 plus 200, 240 meters per second squared. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. All righty. Uh, let's see. I think that's all I'm going to do. This is a shorter lesson, but the homework is not that trivial. Um, 
So we'll see if uh, we need to put extra help in this in this section as needed.